Hello, my name is Juan Moreno. I'm a fourth year landscape architect at Cal Poly. Today I'll discuss my senior project on homelessness and its relationship to landscape architecture. Being a Los Angeles resident, homelessness has always been an apparent piece of urban living. With LA homelessness growing on a year-to-year -year basis with no notable solution to mitigate the increase, the homeless community has become this invisible elephant in an urban jungle. The non-homeless community are highly aware of homelessness, but choose to avoid addressing the issue because of stigmatic views. Beyond social blindness, we can view homelessness from an economic or health perspective. Homelessness usage of public services such as emergency rooms or police arrest amounts to a high monetary value. LAPD alone invests $53 to $87 million a year just on interacting with the homeless. The Los Angeles Bureau of Sanitation has also inv invested nearly half a million dollars for encampment cleanups alone. In light of COVID-19, there is also the issue of self-quarantine, a method used to combat the global virus. If homeless individuals cannot self-quarantine, then that could pose a health risk to themselves and those around them. These examples showcase how homelessness has an economic and social connection to those who are not. Understanding these issues and how they're integrated into our lives really helped me out in terms of molding my senior project. I began asking myself questions such as, how does landscape architecture relate to homelessness? Do defensible designs promote the homeless stigma? And who is being considered in these all-inclusive landscape architecture designs? This exploration helped me establish my thesis. By finding planned and unplanned patterns in the landscape, we can create a genuine sense of inclusivity for all community members. Now it would be foolish to make the conclusion that landscape architecture can end homelessness. However, it does seem feasible that landscape architecture can be used to mitigate certain homeless aspects. I believe by studying the lives of the homeless, we can adapt our designs to these unplanned uses and provide the needed tools for individuals to create healthy social connections and rehabilitative opportunities within a larger community. To formulate an answer for my thesis, I needed to study existing work and articles relating to this issue. It was difficult finding large-scale projects that related to homelessness directly, and the projects that I did find only addressed one aspect. The articles, however, were a highly useful resource. I read articles on the travel patterns associated with homeless living, people's attitudes towards the homeless, effectiveness of supportive housing, and the relationship between gentrification and displacement. These studies solidified the observation that non-homeless individuals train a blind eye towards homelessness. But besides solidifying the point, I learned the negative aspects of landscape architecture. If I create a design with the intent to help the homeless, I need to be aware of gentrification. If I don't account for gentrification in my project, the purpose will never be fulfilled. I also learned about the daily movements and, and activities uh, in regards to homelessness. This really helped me establish the direction of my demographic research and goals for the project. The first goal is locate public spaces within Skidrow that have a notable homeless use. And so some of the objectives to quantify this are identifying areas that are zoned as civic, green, or recreational spaces, but at the same time, identifying non-traditional areas such as alleyways or sidewalks. The next goal is locating amenities and their walkability to these public spaces. Based on the research, we're thinking about public transportation, affordable, affordable housing, and other uh, amenities such as restrooms or showers or water fountains. And the goal after this is to find elements of success and failure within those public spaces identify hardscape or softscape elements that promote that social interaction and rehabilitation. Uh, we'll also look at hardscape and softscape elements that are essential to homeless living, to their daily activities. And at the same time, we want to see elements that, you know, maybe promote uh, negative activities so that we are able to understand where we should put most of our focus in and what areas we should avoid.
And the next goal is develop a design that promotes rehabilitative and reintegrative activities associated with homeless living. And this refers to the comments I made earlier that this project isn't really trying to end homelessness, but instead act as a tool for individuals in need to utilize as a way to feel a part of a community and not excluded. And so we're looking at creating subspaces that invoke socially inclusive activities. And the final goal is develop a design that promotes user inclusivity. And this really ties everything all together. Looking at specialized program elements that you know, should be integrated to invoke rehabilitative activities. Also looking at having all program elements have a universal use, use to both homeless and non-homeless communities. And I think this is where the success will lie within the project. Uh, what I hope to gain out of this project is a better understanding of the homeless community. Um, understanding that there, there are people at the end of the day and using defensible architecture is not doing anything other than pushing them away. And when we talk about a community, we, we need to understand that it's it's not just those that are, are housed. It's everyone within that place because at the end of the day, they are the people creating the sense of place and defining the culture. It's everyone, uh, a big mixing pot. And hopefully once this project is done, I'll have a good knowledge on that. So thank you for listening to my video. Um, please send me any feedback or any potential uh, research opportunities to help me strengthen this project. Thank you.